And so without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Detective Aiden Evelyn of the Lexington Police Department. Thank you, Mina. Really appreciate it. And uh, thanks everybody that signed in tonight. Um, this is kind of a good subject to touch on now since we've been having a lot of different scams going around. But before we start get started, uh, I want to tell you about myself a little bit and then we'll get right into this. Uh, again, like Mina said, I'm Detective Aiden Evelyn. I've uh, been here at the police department now for, this will be my 25th year going on, and been at the detective bureau for about seven years. Um, doing a lot of, uh, my primary role, I could say, is community resource officer. So I do a lot of classes and I go to a lot of meetings and I do a lot of different, wear a lot of different hats, but I don't wanna keep up everybody, take up everybody's time tonight with talking about me. So let's uh, kind of get into this and I got the PowerPoint so hopefully everybody can see that and we'll just get going here and hopefully it'll work. Come on, really? Yeah, come on, is it working? Ah, there we go. So when you get into scams, the best word you can ever remember is say no. No, okay? Uh, it'll get you a long way. And I like to talk about elder fraud and senior scams because they're the majority of people getting scammed. Um, again, 65 and older account for 15% um, of the population and compromise 15% of the fraud victims, or 45, I'm sorry. Uh, and again, where you see at the bottom, 2.9 billion a year. So it's a lot of money being lost by um, private citizens. Um, just being scammed out of their money. So some of the things I'm gonna hit over tonight, uh, recognizing some scams, protecting yourself, uh, some steps to take if you become a victim. And at the end there, we'll touch on some resources and some referrals, okay? So why do we target seniors? Um, why? They're a little bit more vulnerable. Uh, given the age of seniors and how they grew up, People back their age were more trusting of people now. Uh, we didn't have so much uh, the internet that we did, uh, we do now. And back then, of, of course, everything was face to face, by phone, what have you. Um, a lot of seniors aren't used to seeing these type of fraud going on, so it's harder for them to uh, spot it. And, um, they're more polite, okay? Uh, we were taught, you know, growing up in my age, uh, you don't, you know, you're nice to people and you trust people and, um, you know, you're forgiving of some, a lot of things. So it's harder for them to just hang up on that telemarketer and say, no, we're not interested, okay? Um, why do they target seniors? Lots of assets, the retirement, uh, all their pensions, what have you, they're all usually there, okay? Uh, quick open claims of quick profits to bolster their uh, retirement, they have trouble remembering things. Uh, so you could probably, you know, you'll, they'll get a call this morning and they might forget somebody's name and they give them, you know, somebody will call back in the afternoon and give them the same person but give them a different name, but they don't remember a lot of those things either. So the, they, they target the seniors for a lot of those reasons, okay? Again, the politeness um, and seniors don't like to report that they're being scammed. They get embarrassed by that. So we have had issues with um, seniors will come in a month later because their sons or daughters have kind of forced them to come in um, because they, they were embarrassed to come in and tell, them that, tell us that they lost uh, money. So, some of the easy picking lists, all right? Sweepstakes contest, um, you sign up for different things. You, if you walk through the mall and you see a lot of these cards signing up for different things, uh, you get put on a list. For lack of a better term, these con artists, they call it a sucker list. Because when they start calling these people and these people start giving them money, now they sell that to another con artist because these are the people that they know they're gonna get money from. 
So these lists get passed around uh, by a lot of these con artists, okay? Um, you also get calls, again, of people saying, yeah, we know you got scammed or conned, uh, and we're gonna help you get that money back. Again, that's another con, okay? So here's one of our latest things going around, and some of you may or may not have um, experienced this. It's the unemployment fraud. Now, there's not a whole lot we can do. We want you to report it to us. Uh, the feds are um, investigating this. Not, is not all seniors. There are some seniors getting uh, frauded by the unemployment, but it's hitting everybody, okay? The thing to remember is you need to report the unemployment fraud, and right at the bottom of this slide, you can see the uh, mass.gov details there uh, to go online and report that to the unemployment department. That's very, very important that you need to do that. We are um, also, we're getting probably anywhere from 10 to 15 a day of people uh, calling in with this um, unemployment fraud. Now, nobody's losing money because uh, none of the checks obviously have gone out yet. And uh, the only way people know about this is when they get a uh, letter from the unemployment department saying that their uh, benefits have been you know, uh, approved and they're gonna be receiving funds. So if you get something like that and you're not, you know you're not due unemployment, make sure you get on this uh, that website immediately report that because when funds start going out, that changes a little thing, a lot of different things for the government. Um, but we do want you to report it to us also. Uh, and it's a quick note for us. You can call in. You don't have to come into the station itself. So you can just call the police department and they'll have somebody, uh, an officer speak to you on the phone. So I'll give you a couple minutes there if you want to um, copy that page down there. Uh, I know it's being recorded also, but I'll give you a minute or so on that. So, um, what else are we seeing? Unemployment fraud. So, the next biggest thing is our grandparent scam. So, this has taken on many different spins. The latest and greatest of this spin has been uh, they've been calling you saying, um, This is your grandson, granddaughter, and I've been. Um, arrested. I need bail right away. And that's the key to a lot of things when they tell you that they need bail right away. And then if they feel that you don't believe that a lot, they will put um, someone else on the phone who says he's a lawyer for your grandson, granddaughter, and you know his name is such and such, and this is what they need in order to get out. Now with that, they, they try to scare people because they they know, again, seniors, they tell you it's the, there's a gag order in effect. Um, don't tell anybody about this because you're not allowed to tell anybody about that. Um, you don't want to embarrass your son, your grandson, granddaughter, things like that. So before you start sending money out to anybody, okay, please either call your grandson, granddaughter, your son, your daughter, um, find out where the, the kids may be, okay? Scam artists want all kinds of crazy payments. So if they tell you that, you know, we need $12,000 and you can go down and get um, Apple Pay cards or uh, some kind of cards from Wal uh, Walgreens or CVS, right there, there's a scam, okay? You're not going to be get a call for bail from some lawyer, okay? And that's usually not how the court system works. So again, don't put out any money unless you start checking first, okay? And they usually call late and late at night, again, because um, seniors are a little bit, you know, ready for bed <laughs> and um, they're not paying that much attention to things. So again, check first call law enforcement, call the police department. Um, and 
just give us that information. More likely, more or less, uh, more likely, we're going to tell you this is a scam. Contact your your daughter, uh, son, daughter, grandson, grand granddaughter. Okay, um, but that's the latest that, that has been going on. We ever since the employment scam has um, started up, this has gone down a little bit. Uh, another spin to it too. Instead of sending uh, money out. They have been sending couriers to your door to pick money up. Again, that's not how the um, court system works. They're not going to send couriers to your door to pick up money from you for for bail. So please do not send money or give money to care uh, to a courier that's coming out. If someone has told you that we we're sending somebody out to pick up money, please call police department. Let us know that hey. This has happened, and um, someone's coming out with my money to pick to pick up money from my home, um, so we can be there to uh, make sure that doesn't happen. Okay, Detective Evelyn. Yes, we have a question for Michelle. Evelyn. How do you how do they get your grandson granddaughter's name? This happened to a friend's dad. Um, it's ID fraud. I mean, somebody is as filled out something somewhere and they put you down maybe as a contact or a family member. Um, you can go online. Once you have a little bit of information, I can find out a lot about people by paying a little bit of money to some of these search sites. Um, I can find out who your grandmother's name is, uh, grandfather, parents. Um, so a lot of these search um, name search sites, if you pay a fee, you can get a lot of information from that. So that's kind of a, one of the ways they get it. But again, um, filling out a lot of different information cards and things like that, that's how they, they get your information to begin with. Um, I touch on little things like in my one of my other classes about putting your name on the mailbox. If you drive around, you'll see a lot of people who put their, um, like to put their names on the mailbox. So um, if you talk to your mailman, they could care less about the name. They look at the address and they stuff that in your mailbox. So if I'm the bad guy and I can drive around, I will, I can find out, all right, there's a name on the mailbox of whatever Smith. And now of course, obviously I know the, um, the address. I know, you know, the street name, I know the number, I can get on any uh, public web page or town web page and look at an assessor's information. What do the assessor's information give you? Your name, give the full name. Um, so once I have your full name, I can go on one of those uh, informational sites and I can find out a lot more information by paying $40 or what have you for the year to find out more information about you. So. So those are a couple of the ways that they do those things. Um, any other questions on anything? anything else? All right. So second of all, Craigslist scam. So if you're buying, these are usually big things, like um, a lot of people will buy lawnmowers, let's say on Craigslist, and they'll buy it from another state. Um, and you expect that to be shipped to you, obviously, and you send out the money and guess what it doesn't show up so um, be careful on when you're buying things like this very large items uh, because uh, i can go on anywhere go on the internet uh, download a picture of a lawnmower put it up for sale you know and put a, an address or a p.o box for you to send money to or give you an account so you can um, send that money to there and you're not going to receive whatever item that is. Okay. So be careful with very large items. Um, and uh, what else? You can check, like, I'll touch upon it later, but you can, there's also a way to check pictures uh, that, that you see that you can um, see if they've been used before or, or where they come from. And secondly, the prices on these things 
are usually very, very low for the item. So again, let me use the lawnmower. Let's say it's a riding lawnmower and you see somebody's something looks pretty brand new and they're selling it for 200 bucks. Um, you might want to question that. Okay. Usually if something is uh, too good to be true, it is. Okay. So one of the other scams is the romance scam. So this usually happens when people are on some of the dating sites. Um, and it more usually, you'll see a lot more women get scammed this way than men. Uh, but it does happen, obviously, to both. Uh, so you, someone will contact you, they're on, a, they're on these dating sites or what have you, and um, they'll get close to you. Uh, and then as time goes on, uh, you, you know, they'll get all your details, obviously, that you're, you're sharing with them. They'll check social media, other social media sites that, to get more information about you. And they, they just keep kind of dragging you on and on and on. So at a point, they're going to start asking you maybe for money. Uh, and you'll send money for what have you, uh, you know, schooling or, um, you know, I want to take a trip to come and see you, but I don't have the money right now or something to that effect. Uh, and obviously, again, they start with, oh, unfortunately, I can't come right now or um, something came up. I, you know, I, I, what, I can't make the trip or I need more money for something else. So when you start seeing these things happen, start asking questions, okay? Uh, stop sending money, obviously. Uh, try not to, you shouldn't send money to people you've only talked to online anyways, uh, or contact, contacted from one of these sites, you really shouldn't send money at all. Uh, but I'm, I'm not saying that all of these things are fake, but majority of them are, you know, they're just wanting to get money from you some way, shape, or form. So be very careful if you're on any kind of these dating sites uh, or have met somebody on some social media site and wants to kind of uh, get to know you better, for lack of better words, okay? So this is actually a um, letter. I know it's very small. This is a email that I got. <laughs> I wanted to put this in here. Um, I'm not sure how they got my email or what have you, but you can see it's very, um, English is very poor. Um, she even sent a couple of pictures, uh, put her name as Alyssa. And, um, and actually this is from my work email. <laughs> so it wasn't even my private email. This is my work email that this got sent to. So it doesn't matter who you are um, or what have you, you can still, you're still gonna get these things. And once you start responding to some of these things, um, they're gonna start reeling you in more and more and more and more. So I did respond because I wanted to see where this was going to go. <laughs> but I guess um, after a while they figured out that uh, my email said detective at the bottom of it. <laughs> so, so it stopped for quite quickly. So. All right. Here. Oh, fishing. What's fishing? So as you can see, um, you get these in your emails, and basically they're looking for you to respond to uh, this this email to get more information from you. I'll give you an example. I've gotten several of these. Uh, congratulations, um, Kroger customer. Well, I've never shopped at Kroger in my life. <laughs> okay, so they want you to fill out this survey, and then they're going to start asking you more questions, get uh, more information out of you. So. The, those are the type of emails that you're going to get. I've gotten emails from, if you have a pay, PayPal account, um, your PayPal account needs to be updated. And I questioned it. I, instead of clicking on the, um, the site that they give you right in the email, what you want to do is go, you know, open another tab or open another um, web page and go right to that site. Okay, like search, or if you know the, the uh, web address right away, put in PayPal, for instance, and go right to the PayPal site and figure it out from there. Okay, don't click on any of those 
um, links that they give you in that email. Some of those links can give them uh, quick access to your computer and they'll just take over your computer without you even know it. Uh, some will um, give them the ability to um, see all your keystrokes so they can get your password or have you or just the ability to go into your computer and browse your um, accounts and if you have passwords saved in there um, they're going to be able to get all those passwords that you have saved in your um, computer okay so just be careful clicking on emails that you don't know where they came from and links that, that were are in those emails okay Again, security numbers are looking for that um, and as much information as they can get about from you. Okay. We don't see this too much anymore. We used to have the Nigerian um, letters come out. We don't see a lot of it anymore because, um, again, they've moved on to bigger and better things. Um, the Nigerian accounts, um, they, they, again, they're just trying to get more information uh, from you. Okay. So try not to respond to any of these letters. Um, you lose your money, obviously. So don't, you know, if you get something and it's poorly worded um, English, um, be very wary of that and just throw it away, okay? Uh, the sweepstakes and lotteries, we were used to see these a lot. Again, it was part of the Nigerian scam. Um, guess what, you won, $20 million, but in order for you to get that, you have to pay us, you know, we, we want a transfer fee or taxes you have to pay. Well, if you won something, you shouldn't have to pay any money to get it, okay? So that should be the key. If they're asking you for money after telling you that you've won a sweepstakes, then be very wary of that. Um, and then ask yourself, gee, did they, did they even enter this lottery or buy a lottery ticket to begin with? Okay, so don't send any money out to these people. I'll tear up the letter and um, move on. Okay. All right, let's see what we have. Charities, be careful with charities, legitimate ones. There are a lot of ones, obviously, that come up during crisis time. There are a lot of charities that um, all of a sudden pop up, especially like hurricanes or um, you know, traumatic incidents. We'll have charities that uh, pop up all of a sudden. Uh, but legitimate ones will have the right links. You can always check um, the uh, links that they're going to when you, uh, that you're going to donate on to click on these things and see where these are actually going. You know, it'll all, obviously, it'll say if it's a specific charity, it will say that charity link and it'll go right to that. But um, again, watch what charities you're going to. I know there are a lot of police departments and there are a lot of um, organizations that collect for the police. We all we do a fundraising, obviously in Lexington, and you're, I'm sure you're probably going to you get from other um, different police organizations. Those other organizations they don't come to the Lexington Police. Those are a national organization or something like that. So. Um, if you hear somebody saying that they are collecting for the Lexington Police Department, um, just say call me back later and by all means call the Lexington Police Department um, business line and you can always ask, you know, are your patrolman or what have you collecting or doing a fundraiser at this time and uh, they'll answer that question for you. Okay. All right, let's see. Again, you can check if the charity legitimate. Um, you can go online and check all of that. Um, telemarketing. So obviously, if you do get a telemarketing uh, call, these are some of the rules that they're supposed to go by. Um, they're not supposed to call you after 9 p.m. and not before 8, okay? They're supposed to tell you what company they're calling from and what they're selling. Uh, again, we, if you go back to the sweepstakes, there's no purchase needed to enter or win a promotion prizes uh, or contests. So you shouldn't, if they tell you they need money, right there, scam, okay? Uh, ask, asking for advanced payment for credit services. Again, no. Abusive language, threats, or intimidation. They are not a legitimate telemarketer. are not supposed to do that. Um, 
any goods or services cannot be misrepresented. Uh, and again, telemarketers uh, cannot withdraw a payment from your checking. So if they ask you for a checking so they can get direct payment, they're not supposed to be able to do that. Okay, and those are again, legitimate telemarketing. So if you hear some of these things and they're telling you different from what you see here, or, or they're um, telling you you must do this right away. Um, if you don't do this, something could happen. Uh, again, those aren't legitimate telemarketers and I would just hang up. Okay. Detective Aiden? Yes. <laughs> um, I have a question actually. So <laughs> you keep hearing about these do not call lists. Yeah. How, are they legitimate? How do you get on them? Um, so, you yeah, you can do, um, I think I, I might have it later on in, as on the resources in the um, thing, but you can get on the, new, uh, the no call list. It usually lasts for about a month and then you have to redo it again. Um, and you can always look up the number, just go on a national do not call list um, and put you know uh, I don't want to be contacted and you can specify num you know between hours or you can say I don't want to be contacted by anyone at all so that's usually how that works but you do have to renew it um, every month or so I believe okay yeah. we don't see a lot of people nowadays they don't really pay attention to the no call list um, or sign up for it because of the um, uh, calls are screened now and numbers come up and if you have Verizon things come up as spam now or a potential spam so we don't see a lot of people signing up for the no call list because they already know and they're not even going to pick it up to begin with so those are some of the new features that um, Verizon has done and I only say Verizon because I have Verizon but I don't know if, if you have a Comcast um, type phone set up or any of the other um, phone companies a few uh, if they do the same, I'm, I'm assuming they probably would, uh, but those are newer things that come in. Would you say that they're um, the same in terms of being um, helpful for both landlines and cell phones? Oh, absolutely, yeah, you can put both. You can put okay. your cell phone number or you can put your landline number. Great, thank you. Sure. And just to go back on that too, um, a lot of people don't have landlines now. I, I keep my landline for that specific perf, uh, purpose because when I write my numbers on something, I write my um, my landline because I don't pick it up half the time. <laughs> so, so if you don't want people calling your cell phone all the time and you still have a landline, always use, use your landline phone number and you can pick it up if you want or screen it, what have you, okay? So we have the work at home scams. Uh, we see this every now and then in the papers, work from home, make thousands of dollars every month. Um, some are scams, some are legitimate, majority are scams, okay? Uh, what's gonna happen is they're gonna ask you to buy a lot of things, you know, you have to buy these materials and, um, and then you have to basically sell them. And you can make thousands of dollars by selling these materials from home. So unless you want to spend a lot of money and do a lot of work and try to sell these things to recoup your money, I'd stay away from some of these things that you see in the newspaper as work from home or something like that. Again, I don't, we don't see them a lot, but they're still out there. Uh, computer repair frauds. Um, sometimes you'll get this as a phishing scam on your, uh, when you're in your emails. So you click on this, they'll say, uh, your computer has been compromised or uh, something is that you have a lot of errors, please click here, we can fix this for you. Uh, what's happening there is again, someone wants to take control of your computer and they'll just get everything from your computer that they need to. They'll take complete control, they can lock it out um, and they'll have to pay a fee for them to open it up again. So the only way to either get rid of that is you know somebody who's good with computers could unlock it um, they have to unlock it once again you have to pay them a fee and usually it's in the hundreds of dollars for them to unlock your computer for you or you just trash your computer <laughs> just throw it away so i hope i know most people just don't want to go out and buy a new computer so be careful with clicking on um saying uh emails or anything that says 
uh, your computer has been compromised or you have a lot of errors you need to, if we can fix this, what have you. Okay. And a lot of, sometimes there are a lot of these sites that you'll just happen to pop up. So make sure you have a good um, virus protection on your computer to prevent that, those from happening to you. Uh, credit card frauds, again, uh, be careful of skimmers, uh, the gas pumps. This is how they get a lot of your information. Um, that's going around a lot. Um, if you're gonna use uh, some of these gas pumps, try not to use the ones on the outer islands. Um, use the ones closer to the, you know, if it's one of the, like a Cumberland Farms or some of these convenience stores, use the ones closer to the um, store itself. Because the, these people who are putting the skimmers in, they tend to use the uh, outer islands because they don't, they're not seen as much. And uh, they're quick. These skimmers are very quick. I wish I had put a picture up there, but it's um, very little um, piece of wire, more or less, or connector uh, that they just attach inside the, um, the gas pump. And they can do it two ways. They can go back at a certain point in time and collect all the information. They can, they'll just take that skimmer out. Or they have Bluetooth, so they're sitting in a parking lot and they connect to Bluetooth to the skimmer and they just download all the information right from the skimmer and they never have to go back and get that skimmer. Uh, problem with a lot of these gas pumps and gas stations is the keys that get into them are um, not, um, they're the same key. <laughs> so all these gas pumps basically use the same keys to get into access to uh, all the pumps. So if someone's, you know, unscrupulous and they've gotten fired, they can, they'll sell that key uh, to somebody and they, these people are getting access to all the um, gas pumps. Second way is ATMs. When you pull up to an ATM, all right, and I do it every time I do, grab a hold of if, if it's the green card in slot, slot pull on that, okay? Um, make, make sure it's really supposed to be there. Um, these guys are getting very good with these uh, attachments and they, they'll match them completely and they'll just put a cover right over um, what that um, card insert looks like. And uh, every time you put a card in, it just takes all your information and it stores it with, internally and they just come back and take that cover right off. So give a yank to that ATM uh, insert, card insert, uh, make sure it's right and it's staying on there and doesn't come off before you tend to use it. Um, we don't see it a lot anymore, but they used to do uh, a lot of these face plates at some of the stores. And again, I didn't put any videos on here, but you can kind of look it up on YouTube. But uh, they're, they're very quick. They'll match a face plate. They come in, they distract the cashier, and, and the second person will just put a uh, faceplate right over the current faceplate that's sitting on the uh, counter. So that's how they get a lot of your card information also. And then the, once they get all that information, they, they can um, put it on any kind of card. So they can buy any kind of gift card or what have you, or any kind of card and just install all their, your information on that memory card on the back of a, um, like a debit credit card, what have you, anything. And um, we've seen that going around and you, they might call it the Romanian scam or something to that effect uh, because a lot of these people are from overseas and they'll come, they'll go around from state to state. Um, they'll gain, you know, they'll, they'll stay here a week, they'll stay in a hotel, and they'll get as much information as possible. And then they'll go to ATMs and start taking out money as quick as they can. Um, the last time we had one, we had one here in Lexington. They empty out, I'm not gonna say the bank name, but they emptied out a bank ATM of $64,000. Um, and the only way that we knew um, is because the bank alarm, ATM alarm goes off when it's empty and it notifies the bank manager that it's empty. Um, kudos to the bank manager who said, well, 
I just filled that thing up on Friday and now it's Saturday. It shouldn't be empty of $64,000. So he called us right away. Um, these people went from Bedford. They were here in Lexington and they were also in Burlington. Um, we were able to catch them. We called, oh, sorry, we caught three out of four of these people and they are now um, three of them are serving time for that crime. So if we get notified quickly, sometimes we can um, get a, get a, get ahead of a lot of these crimes. All right, so. Quick question. Uh, yes. Um, so it's not necessarily the employees of the gas station that are doing that. No, no, Okay. no. Yeah. It's not, usually not. someone coming in from somewhere else and just attaching that skimmer right there. Um, your card statements, anything um, shredded by a good shredder. You want a cross cut shredder if you can. A little more expensive than just a um, strip sh shredder. Crosscut really makes it like confetti. Uh, but shred everything. Don't put it once you put something in the garbage or trash, and you put it out on the uh, sidewalk. Um, it's now abandoned property. So if somebody, anybody can come along and take your trash um, and go through it and try to get as many uh, information about you or your account numbers or what have you. So shred everything that you don't want anybody else to read before you put it in the trash, okay? Dumpster diving again, once anything is put into a dumpster, it's abandoned property. Um, and so anybody can come along and grab whatever it is out of that dumpster. Uh -huh. Again, shred everything, anything that's sensitive. So, um, do, 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 contractors. Um, be careful of someone who knocks on your door and says, um, I have some extra uh, asphalt and I can pave your driveway for you, you know, at $2,000. What we kind of refer them with the, to them as traveling gypsies. Um, so basically they're going to get a little bit amount of um, asphalt. They're going to throw some down. They're going to require you to pay like half a front. So again, if it's $3,000, they're going to want $1,500. They're going to put some asphalt on top of what you already have there. And then they're going to say, we'll be back tomorrow to finish it up. And you, you're now down $1,500. Okay. So be aware of these people just knocking on your door, um, calling themselves contractors. All right. Uh, we had people going around also cutting trees. They're not licensed, they're not bonded. Um, if something, they drop a tree on your house, um, guess what? You're gonna be very out of luck because none of these people are licensed. Um, there's no bond on them. So you're gonna have to, you know, again, if something happens to your house, try to go through your home insurance to get that fixed. Um, so watch for these contractors who, again, um, they might not have any kind of name on their trucks, they're just a, plain old white truck or beat up old truck pulling a, um, a, a chipper or a shredder or a, a, a chipper behind it or they might have some kind of a lift that they're pulling also and a lot of them will have out of state plates. Um, so just be wary of uh, who these people are um, and check them out before you hire them, okay? ID theft, again, um, any number of ways you can get ID theft, filling out different information, um, not shredding your information, uh, just talking to people over the phone, giving your information over the phone. Um, just be careful of people asking for too much information from you. I don't uh, I, you know, really need your social security number. If I get a name and a date of birth from you, usually I can get um, apply for some different things uh, to get um, credit card or what have you. I don't always need a social security card uh, number, but there are ways for me once I have your name and I have a date of birth, and obviously I'm gonna try to do a little research, I'll find your address, um, then I can I can probably get away with, you know, trying to fill out some applications for some different things. We have had, um, not in Lexington, but um, there are cases over the, you know, across the country that people have used other people's ID to buy houses, um, <laughs> purchased. Um, we had 
one here in town, we had an ID stolen and people uh, created a credit card and they were now char um, chartering private flights from Houston to Chicago every weekend. <laughs> so things like that do happen and um, uh, be wary of how you, who you give out information to. Try to check your bank statements um, daily. If you can get online for your bank statements, check that daily. Um, every, you know, if not every day, every other day, just to see if there's any kind of um, you know weird things going on with your bank account, or you know, you, all of a sudden you have money uh, that you see in disappearing on you. Some banks will either you can set limits on your cards. Also, if you have a debit card, you can set a limit on that to um, for spending. So, let's say five hundred dollar limit per day. So, if somebody starts to try and charge eight hundred, nine hundred, your bank should be on top of that. Um, you also, if you have a pretty good bank, they should be aware of your spending history, and if they start seeing different things, um, you know different type of spending or out of state spending that um, they should contact you to say, is this you? Okay. And the reason why I mentioned that because yes, this happened to me. <laughs> Same thing. I have a limit set on my um, account, but my bank saw my spending history and they contacted me to say, you know, are you, I think it was Oklahoma. No, where was it? Kansas. I was not in Kansas, but right here in Massachusetts. So someone tried to charge $800 worth of stuff on my debit card. So I uh, thank them for catching that. So the fake cashier's checks, um, we don't see this a lot anymore either, but it, it's still out there. Um, you do get, let's say, um, someone will send you or they're going to buy something from you, and they send you a check for, let's say, you know, the item costs. $200 that you want for this item and they send you a check for $1,500 and said, uh, or $1,200 let's say. And they'll say, oh, oops, we made it out for the wrong amount. Just cash it and send me back the money. Well, once you cash that, um, that check in, you sent the item off already to them. You cash that check, it's gonna bounce and the person responsible for that money that bounces is you. So be very careful if you see these checks come out that are more than you asked for something or a sweepstakes check or something to that nature, okay? But again, we don't see a lot of that right now anymore. Uh, for those of, you, those of you who have caretakers for your parents, um, check them out before you um, let them go into your parents' homes. We've, we have had incidents with you know caretakers um, stealing credit cards or um, going out just buying things uh, on their own and you know or buying food or something to that effect of um, just buying more than what they need and just spending your parents um, hard-earned money and still living or taking care of your parents at the same time um, again if you don't check the accounts regularly you, you won't notice that spending um, and they're taking advantage of, you know, these people in their home. Again, uh, you can you can contact Adult Protective Services, <coughs> excuse me, or um, you know, check just check in on your parents regularly to make sure they're okay. All right, um, property assets. Um, just be careful of things you safe deposit boxes. Documents, I, re I recommend if you don't have a safe in your home, get a safe, a fireproof safe. Put all your uh, files and documents that you feel are very important, uh, expensive jewelry, things like that. Don't put these things in your, um, don't put the safe in your closet. Because, again, because if somebody ever breaks into your home, first, first place they usually look for things that are in the bottom of a closet or drawers or things like that. Um, People laugh at me when I say, if you have a safe, put it in your garage somewhere out of, out of sight because nobody's gonna go around your garage looking for a safe. And if it's a safe that you don't need to get into it on a continuous basis, there's no need to have it somewhere in your home. Just have it, put your important papers in there that you, know, you don't really need, but you wanna protect, 
put them in the garage somewhere and just uh, have it out of sight. Okay. Uh, some quick warning signs, uh, prize, free, free gifts, uh, special offers. You must act immediately or you lose out. Those are the key words. Um, shipping for prizes and gifts. Credit card numbers, they want it right way. They want your credit uh, expiration dates. So if you start seeing things like that, again, some of the warning signs there, all right? Uh, personal information, uh, personal, uh, donate to an agency whose name, you know, it's well known, but uh, they may not be even collecting at this point, okay? Uh, again, keywords, you've been, you're a chosen few. Uh, and again, like I said previously, a courier will come to your home to pick up the money for you. That, um, that shouldn't happen, okay? Uh, some of the telephone scams, again, uh, trick you out of money, make false promises, such as opportunities to buy products, um, free grants, lotteries. And again, they keep calling and calling and calling. Once they get money from you, they're gonna call some more. And they're gonna keep calling until they, they stop getting money out of you. Um, and they don't care because they use what we call throwaway phones. Their phones, you just buy at um, Walmart, perhaps, and just you pay as you go. And once they're done with that phone, they get rid of that number and it's gone. You know, again, I've I've called numbers back, and you know, I've gotten some very nasty words said to me, and I can care less what you think and all of that. So um, they don't, they can care less because again, they're probably not even in this country to begin with. Okay. Um, there's a, here's the registry, national do call registry. So it's 1-888 number, 382-12222. So that's the national do call um, number. Uh, let's see, again, hang up on suspicious phone calls. Um, some of the stuff spoofing, they're not gonna, it's, a lot of it doesn't happen if, the phones as much. Um, you can also report a lot of these scams or telemarketers that are calling you after the hours. You can report them to the FCC. Um, the numbers that right at the top with the 877 number, the 382-4357, you can report it to them uh, and they'll put them on their um, call list too. So we'll skip through that. Uh, banking scams, uh, unsolicited, unsolicited check fraud. Uh, they, again, they send you a check for no reason. The cash amount's usually more than what the purchase item is for. The overpayment. Um, automatic withdrawals. If you have an automatic withdrawal from something, just, you know, if it's just, and it says a free trial, make a note to yourself to go back and, you know, shut it off if you're something that you don't want. All right. Put it a note somewhere or put it in your calendar somewhere to I have a free trial of 30 days, but it's not set up it as an automatic payment. You want to go back and make sure you cancel that. Uh, phishing, we talked about that already. I'm not going to touch on that anymore. Excuse me, it's dry in here. Um, some of the investment scams, just be aware, you know, pyramid schemes, Ponzi scams, you know, they. Um, we don't see this a lot, but you'll see this with people who invest a lot of money. They'll get into these pyramid schemes, but we don't really see it a lot on our level, um, federal level. They probably see it a lot more than we do. So, uh, census, we had the census going around. Uh, if you did not fill out your census, they do send people to your home, but these people are, um, should have ID on them. They're going to be legitimate. You can check. You can call the town hall. Say, are these people registered? Uh, who who they are? So don't give out your information to these people unless they have some legitimate ID on them that proves who they are. Okay. Again, uh, protect your assets. Don't allow strangers into your home. Um, power attorneys, be very careful who you give them to. Like. Caretakers, don't let a caretaker talk you, you know, your mom, parents, whoever, into making them power of attorneys for them. Um, don't sign a blank, blank contracts, okay? Uh, make sure anything you're signing is legitimate and you get a copy of the contract that goes with it, okay? 
if you do become a victim, make sure you call us right away. The quicker you call us, um, the quicker we can get on, on top of trying to track these people down. Uh, if you wait a week, you wait you know, two days, three days, and most of the people are gonna be gone, and so is your money. Uh, if you somebody calls you up and, and you do go out and buy the iPhone card or the Apple card or what have you, and you call them back and you give them, you know, you scratch those numbers on the back and you give them all those numbers, your money is going to be gone very quickly. And they don't even, they don't need the card. All they need is the numbers on the back of the card and they're going to go down, uh, pick up that money, download it, what have you from, uh, and it's gone. Okay. So please do not call back and give people card numbers or if they tell you to go to Walgreens and buy green dot cards or any of those type of things, that's not how people collect bail. That's not how people, um, collect anything or pay for your bills. You don't pay for them with green dot cards or iPhone cards or Apple cards or any of that. Um, I don't think I mentioned that, but the, it was for a while. The, they were calling and saying they were national grid and they were asking you, you know, your bills behind and you know, you need to pay this right away. We're going to set your like, we're going to turn off your electricity right away and you need to go down to Walgreens or what have you to, get money. Okay. That's not how uh, people accept money from you for payments. Uh, we have in this town, we have gone to Walgreens and we have gone to um, CVS's and to let them know, you know, if you see some of the elderly coming in and they are buying a lot of cards, $500 each on each card or something like that, ask the questions. Um, and they do now, if you're buying gift cards, they do come up on the screen and do you know where this is going or questions like that. They can't hold people there, but we did ask them, you know, if you can try to give us a call, we'll come down and try to catch them before they go home. Or if they know them, try to, you know, let us know where they live so we can try to stop them from sending this money. So, so they don't lose their savings or lose their life savings. Um, I go around to the banks every year. I keep a bank database of all the information from banks and talking to, um, oh, what happened there? Talking to one of the um, bank managers who had a lady come in and wanted to take out some money. Oh, what's going on there? Um, and then she left, came back, wanted to take out some more money. So he started, you know, he knew the lady and he started to question her about what this money was for. And she said, none of your business um, it's for a contractor. Um, but he kind of thought it was a little weird because she did come back a third time and he, he, he questioned her again and, and she got mad at him and took all her money out of the bank and went to another bank. So we do have things like that happening. You know, you can't always um, convince somebody that it's a scam once they have it in their, their head that, you know, they're going to get something out of this or win more money or, you know, or, um, you know, try to get more money to help their family or what have you. So again, they're, once you can, they're convinced of that, they're, they're not going to let go of that thought. Um, so I think that was the last one. So if we have any questions, Mina, I don't know. Yeah. If anybody has any questions, feel free to um, either type them into the chat box or you can even unmute yourself and ask the question. Um, I have one to get started. Oh, actually, Michelle has one too, but I'm going to get started. What, how does social media play into this? Because I've seen a lot of people playing these games on like Facebook and they're like, what's your, you know, favorite color? What's your first mm -hmm. That's just a way to get more information. So all those things, you know, like you said, what's your favorite color? Um, what's your, your favorite animal's name? What was your favorite pet's name? Um, well, who's your, who's your, um, your best friend that you would, you know, you would go out with for something a lot along those lines. So those are a lot of those things are things to get information. Um, uh, I wouldn't, you know, recommend it. I wouldn't recommend giving a lot of information out on social media if you can help it at all. 
Um, you, you don't know where you're going. And also, like, if you're a Facebook, let's say, yeah. even if you have your um, page pretty locked down and private, if, let's say, somebody who's on your friends list um, doesn't have their page so locked down, they can go through your friends page and kind of find out more information about you also. So just be careful on what you're putting there and, you know, um, letting out on social media as much, as much as you can. Thank you. I think Michelle has a question. I, yeah, I have a question. So on my PayPal account, um, something popped up recently. It says money is waiting for you and it's like $610 mm -hmm. and then there's a little, thing that says accept the money <laughs> it on your page did you go to the paypal site itself yeah yes. it's strange so i haven't accepted it because i don't know anyone that owes me money or yeah you didn't sell anything nothing like no. that hmm, no that's odd. it is weird uh, yeah i've never seen that one <laughs> i know my husband's like just accept it and see what happens but i'm afraid to <laughs> if you have um but they're pretty trusted source, so I it, it is. And if you went to the PayPal site itself, um, I, I don't see how or why. You know, maybe there's a customer service button you can click on or something to see where that money came from. Uh, I don't. I don't know. To, I, don't, I have. Yeah, PayPal there's like two options. Lot, if you but. accept it, it's like you can either keep it in your PayPal, mm -hmm. or you can transfer it to your bank. Yeah, I mean, if you keep it in the PayPal. They're not having access to your bank. Um, you know, I'm like your husband. Eh, give it a shot. <laughs> I know. Keep, see what's keep it. Keep it where it is, and not. Yeah. Uh, so once you access to your bank, you know, then that could that could mean routing numbers and account numbers and things like that. So if you keep it in the PayPal, um, then that's on their server. Um, so I, I don't. I don't see. You know, it probably wouldn't hurt you on there. But it's yeah. just weird that, you know, where we're doing. You never sold anything way back or nobody. No, or no. Hmm. I, That's oh, you know, so I just did it. And it's saying by clicking agree and continue, confirm. So it, I think it's opening up an account with them. Oh, yeah. So okay. That, That's, 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 that's what yeah, so that I'm makes sense. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's probably like a pre approved yeah. amount. That they're giving you, yeah, that makes sense then. Okay. Oh, I'm just deleting that. Yeah, I don't, I don't go on the PayPal site a lot, but uh, that's I, that one I've never seen. I've never seen yeah. that one. So good. I'm glad I you know, cleared that one up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, so we don't have any other questions from um, the participants, but I have one last question. Um, unless anybody else says, feel free to pipe in. Um, so you know how nowadays we have like face recognition for security for our phones and our tablets and all mm -hmm. of that, um, you know, finger recognition or, and all of that. Is that necessarily more secure than just having a pin number? Um, facial rec is, uh, unless you have a twin. Mm. <laughs> so <laughs> I've seen it where, you know, they, they have twins and it recognizes both of them as the same person. Mm -hmm. So, but facial rec is um, usually better than having the pin mm -hmm. um, because anybody, you know, somebody does find a pin on you, they can get that from it. Or um, if I look at your phone and, and don't tell anybody I said this, <laughs> but if you look at your phone and the fingerprints on it, you can kind mm -hmm. of see, the, you can see the repetitive, especially if you have like a four number pin, it makes mm -hmm. it easier to get. So if you see the fingerprints, you can see the, re re the repetition of where those prints were. Um, so that's one way to get. Um, obviously, if you have a longer pin number, um, it's harder to get. But the, the four number pin, you know, there's only so many combinations you can get from that. Um, but yeah, facial rec uh, is harder to beat than okay. just having the um, the uh, pin number on there. So. All right. Thank you. Sure. Um, well, so this. This um, ends our program, I think. Um, thank you so much, Detective Evelyn. This has been You're really welcome. informative.